Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. Before I get started, I want to say Happy Easter to those that celebrate. Today, we are going to go back to the basics, and I am going to show you how to do an acrylic pour using two ingredients. Now, I want to make a quick statement before I do that regarding ingredients. If you are new to acrylic pouring and you are trying to do a bloom technique or a bloom recipe, let's, let's keep that bloom category separate from acrylic pouring, okay? Let's try to think of it that way. Acrylic pouring is here. Bloom technique is over here. Two different things. Two different mediums are being used. And you need to learn acrylic pouring first before you go do the bloom technique, if that makes sense. The ingredients in the bloom technique are not used in acrylic pouring. They're used just for that one technique. I'm getting a lot of emails from a lot of new people that will come on YouTube and they'll watch one of my videos or they'll watch somebody else's videos that's doing a bloom technique. And then all of a sudden I'll get an email from them saying, oh, I just tried to do a ring pour and my rings aren't staying together. I don't know what I did wrong. I put the cell activator in between each color and right there, boom. As soon as I hear cell activator, I know what's going on. So let me, let me try to clear it up very simple. When you want to do an acrylic pour other than a bloom technique, you need to watch some older videos. I have a ton of older videos where I'm using just Floetrol and water. You need to, and another thing that's very important is you need to know how to do acrylic pouring before you even attempt that bloom technique. That is a very advanced technique in the line of, in the order of things, um, it's much more simpler to, to learn how to pour using glue and water to do a flip cup, a ring pour, a straight pour, a dustpan pour, a, a flip, whatever you want to call them, okay? It's, you have to learn that style of pouring first before you go over to that bloom side. Over to the dark side is what I'm calling it now. <laughs> but anyway, that I really feel like that technique, that bloom technique and the terms that go with it are confusing people so much that the original art form of acrylic pouring is being slaughtered. Like people are just so confused. So try to think of them as two separate entities. You have acrylic pouring over here, which is a Dutch pour, a flip cup, a strainer pour, a colander pour, um, all, all your, your, anything except a bloom technique is over here. And then over here is the bloom technique. Okay. So if you want to do any of these techniques, you need to use the recipes for these techniques. And then if you want to do the bloom technique, you use this one recipe, okay? Now, what may confuse some people is they see someone like me or other people use this recipe for one of these techniques. But that's only because I know how to do these techniques with their original ingredients and now I've been able to take this uh, techniques recipe and incorporate into this, get this style of of pattern in the paint with this using this recipe but before you do that what i'm doing watch some older videos watch um i'm in my titles now i'm putting original acrylic pour when i'm using these techniques recipes okay i hope that helps somewhat a little bit some really awesome channels to watch when you're first starting out, besides mine, of course. Go, go back. If you click on the video tab on YouTube, go back prior to October 
2019 and you'll see the older recipes that you should learn first before doing that bloom technique okay also there are some great older channels out there that are like the staples of the pouring community you have uh christina welsh uh amory ritterhoff melly d ann osborne sandra Lett, all those older channels that were around way before a lot of us that really taught acrylic pouring and if you go to those channels and look at their older videos from at least a year ago you will see how acrylic pouring is done okay so i hope that helps today we are going to do a very simple recipe glue and water only and i'm going to show you how to make a beautiful painting so let's get started all right so here we go please excuse the mess as you can see i'm not perfect and nobody on youtube is perfect <laughs> as far as i'm concerned if they tell you they are then shame on them but anyway we're going to make a very simple recipe here that is going to allow you to figure out what the right consistency for acrylic pouring should be all right so get yourself a cup we're going to make this very simple get yourself a cup this is a McDonald's cup I recycle and get yourself some glue and fill that cup up, fill that cup up, fill that cup up a little bit over half of the way full with glue. Between 60 and 70% glue. Okay. Then Take your water. You don't have to use bottled water. You can use any type of water. And fill that up, that cup up, almost to the top. Leave yourself enough room to mix without it going all over the place. And then mix it up, okay? It's that simple. That is what you're going to use to mix your colors into. Glue and water. Mod Podge, basically. Now, this is just one of many pouring recipes. You can add to this. You can add Floetrol to this. You can add uh, GAC800, which is great for cracking, if you're having cracking issues. Um, you can use... pouring medium you can use a combination of all three it's all on what you prefer you have to be like little scientists and test it out let me not mix over the canvas because it's dripping water test it out okay until you find something that you like the purpose of this right here is to help people that are struggling with consistencies understand what the correct consistency should be which is this okay now this is not what it's going to look like when i put paint in it right so the paint's going to thicken it up so this is not a true representation of what the consistency should look like what the consistency should look like is this right here plus a oh uh, let's sit here let's use a deco art paint let's use an extreme sheen this is sapphire the this is a good way to know or to find out what a consistency should be like all right so i have some of my paint here which looks like it's separated from sitting. Just put a little stick in there. Okay, so we could put some of this in the bottom of the cup. I'd say that is a tablespoon of paint. Okay, and then we're going to fill up this little Dixie cup. 
with some of our mixture we just made, we'll fill it up halfway. Now these two things combined will make a really good consistency. And then this way you'll know no matter what type of paint brands you use and the thicknesses or what kind of ingredients you use to make your own homemade pouring medium, you'll know what the right consistency is just by mixing these simple ingredients together. Okay. So Here's what I'm going to tell you for sure. This is right now. So put a tablespoon of paint and we'll say these are two ounce cups that is filled almost to the top. So I'll say an ounce and a half of pouring medium. And that is a perfect consistency right there. It leaves a little mound, but disappears right away. Okay, so there you have it. So now I'm going to go around and I'm going to actually, I'll mix my white next for you guys. So the white I'm using is also Deco Art Americana. Now this one is a little bit more fluid than the metallic is because the metallic paint has mica in it, so it's a thicker bodied paint. So where I had to add a little more pouring medium into this to thin it out, this one, I can just put my pouring medium in, mix it, and it's going to be the perfect consistency because this paint itself is just more fluid. Actually, oh, look at that. Actually, it's the perfect, okay? It doesn't add much body to that pouring medium we just made. Don't worry, I'm going to scrape that canvas off before we start. I'm just working in a war zone here, it seems, today. <laughs> okay, so now that is very good. That's very good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a couple more colors the same way. The most important part of this video was learning how to make this so you'll see what that consistency is good for. And that consistency, this consistency right here is really good for Dutch pours. Okay, so 70% glue, 30% water. All right, so I'm going to mix up a couple more colors and then we will get started. Okay, I have all my colors mixed up. I mixed up a nice um, luminous violet by Holbein. You can see the consistency there. I have a door, a door, a cat scratching at my door right now. They want to be fed. Um, here's another. I'm sorry, that was magenta I just showed you. This one is luminous violet Holbein. Then I have the metallic from Deco Art, the sapphire. And then this one is called Muted Violet, and it is by Liquitex. All right, they are all mixed into our pouring medium that we made. And here we go. So, first thing I want to do, we're going to do a ring pour. I'm going to try to keep it on the outer edge. So the first thing I want to do is get some paint on this canvas. Mixing while I'm pouring. How do you like that one? <laughs> All right. Then what I'm going to start doing now is, <clears throat> excuse me, filling my cup. I'm going to put in some white. Some of 
muted and violet. Magenta. Whoops. Don't want to pour over that canvas. Let's try not to do that. Here, let me move it for a minute. What a mess I've got going on here. A little more white. The blue. So I'm going to put two colors and then some white. And then I'll alternate here. Let's do magenta this time first. I like that muted violet. That'll add a lot of depth, that color. Uh, let's do the blue. This. And then I'm going to do one more round with white and one more of the muted violet okay all right so there's our cup for now if we need to mix up another one we will or make another one i should say i'm going to take this and tilt it to get that splatter off that I had there okay and here we go I'm going to try to pour right around the outer edge here see how it goes So the glue mixture works really well. Okay, just working my way in a little bit. I'm gonna stop there with that. And then I'm going to take some white and I'm going to get in the center here. Oh, how did blue get in there? Well, that stinks. Can I cover it? <laughs> Can we cover it? Mix it in. All right, that's better. All right, so now I'm going to come this way. So I'm not liking the effect I have here. Let's see if I could continue this on. I 
Okay. All right. So now it's time to tilt. Let's see what we get. Let's put some just to help it over here. This will come right off the canvas when we're tilting. You want your paint to move as easily as possible so that the design that you've created doesn't roll over on itself. That's one way to help it. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm really curious to see how this goes. Okay, stop there. I apologize if you're seeing glares. There's nothing I could do about that right now. This is different. I love it. I like different. I don't know about you guys, but I do. The same old, same old all the time really gets to me. So you got to kind of think outside of the box a little bit here. Or else you become ordinary. Nobody wants that. So. To get some more of this to open up. There you go. Sure is different, but hey. Make it whatever you want, right? right so that's my video for today guys you can see with just glue and water you can do a beautiful acrylic pour okay now it may not be the pattern you like but the point of this was to show you with just glue and water you can do your pretty ring pours and the rings will stay together you can do your straight pours whatever you want to do it'll work so keep it simple until you get where you need to be educationally, then jump into that bloom technique. That is my advice anyway. I can see a nice little painting done right in this area. So I hope that you guys all enjoyed the video. Um, I will try to uh, keep in mind beginners and terminology from now on. And um, I just hope you all have a great day. Enjoy it if you're with your family. Enjoy it if you're not. Um, I'm with you. I am social distancing. I'm not going to risk my beautiful grandson and daughter's life to go over there today. So I am alone with you, but I am here with you. So anyway, you all have a great day. I really need to move that light <laughs> and happy pouring.